Good evening everybody and welcome to St. James Church in Dundas. My name is Mike and I'm the priest here and I'm so glad that even while we cannot celebrate Christmas together in person, we can celebrate together online. I hope that you and your family are able to be together as you watch this so that we can sing together and pray together and hear the Christmas story together. And remember that we are joining, not just with our families in our homes, but with all those around Dundas and beyond who are joining us in prayer and praise of this very special night. Well, we know this is a special night and tomorrow is a very special day. But our celebrations can't start until we do one very special thing. For the last four weeks, we've been lighting each of the candles on our Advent wreath here at church. It's like a countdown, getting ready for the big day. And so when we light the last candle, the Christ candle, we know it is Christmas and our celebrations can begin. I'm really glad that one of our friends was able to stop by the church building to do that very special thing and light our Christmas candle. So Piper, thank you for being here. Will you start Christmas for us and light the Christ candle? Now let us pray. Eternal God who made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of your one true light, bring us who have seen Jesus' light and love on earth to see more fully your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen.
now that we've sung our first song, let's hear the Christmas story. And some special friends have dropped by again to tell us that story. So Louis, Micaiah and Skye, thank you for coming to read to us. A reading of the Gospel of St. Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was the governor of Syria. All went to their, their own towns to be registered. Joseph, Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. She gave, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there is no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This is a sign, this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth lying in a manger. And suddenly there was... With the angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and, and the child laying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed and at the at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. The Gospel of Christ. Well, that's the very special story we remember tonight. And now we've heard it. Let's sing about it. And Ella is going to lead us in that beautiful song, Away in a Manger.
So I want you to meet a special friend of mine who's come to celebrate Christmas with us at St. James this year. This is Nick. Nick, come and meet everybody. Hi, everyone. Hi, Mike. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Everything looks so pretty. It must be a very special day. It is. It's one of the most special and joyful days of the whole year. But why, Mike? And why does everything look so different? I mean, why are you lighting candles and decorating trees and singing songs well, and because. dressing up <laughs> and telling stories? Because it's Christmas, Nick, and we do all of this so that everyone can see it and know that they are invited to the best party ever. Wait, there's a party? With invitations? Like my friend's birthday parties? Yeah, it's actually a bit bigger than your friend's birthday party, Nick. This one's been going on hmm, around 2,000 years. That is such a long time. Who gets to be part of the party, Mike? Well, hey, do you know the story about the baby Jesus born in a manger in Bethlehem? Well, I heard of it, but I don't think there's anyone named Nick in it. Hmm, maybe there is. Ha! Huh. How about I tell you this story, because it's all about invitations. Well, that would be great, Mike. So a long time ago, God decided to come to Earth and be born as a baby. Here we go. Aww. I know, cute, huh? And he decided if he was going to be born on Earth, he should have the best birthday party. Ever. Wow, I mean, if God was coming, that must be like the best party in the world. It was, but you know, it might not be the kind of party that you imagine. Well, I'm sure there was candy, right? Uh, no. And games? Mm -mm. Were there party hats? No, no. Um, decoration? No, you see, Nick, it was a, uh, it was, well, it, this party was held in a, in a stable with, with animals, Nick. Um, that's kind of a weird party. But who got invited? Well, I'm glad you asked, because that's what really matters, right? First, God invited Mary. Here she is. God sent an angel to invite Mary because Mary was going to be Jesus' mum. And she was frightened and shocked by that, but she was also really excited to be a mum. Mary was so full of love. God wanted Mary there to make sure that everyone who came felt loved. Well, that is awesome. Exactly. God because doesn't leave anyone out. He wants them to feel loved. And having someone to love us is the best thing. It is, isn't it? And that's why he also invited Joseph. Now, this was kind of important because Joseph and Mary were going to be married. He invited Joseph. He was a carpenter. And he was really good at caring for people and looking after them. And he was going to look after Mary and Jesus and all the people who came to the party. That is awesome! Because caring for people is really important. It is. It's like the best gift, isn't it? Yeah. When you're cared for, it feels like you've got the best thing ever. Exactly. Anyway, God now wanted to invite some people from far, 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 far away. Now, it was difficult to do that in those days, so he had to send a was very... Was Facebook? No, it wasn't a Facebook invitation. There Instagram? Was no, no, there was no Instagram. Twitter? No Twitter. TikTok? No, no TikTok. LinkedIn? No, no, Nick, no. He had to, go, big, he had to go bigger. He had to My go space. bigger. No, no MySpace either. He had to send a star. A star? A star. Now, I don't have a star here, but can you see the one on the top of the Christmas tree? It's beautiful. It is, isn't it? You see, God sent a star in the heavens to shine so brightly and twinkle that people would be able to follow it all the way to the party. See, God made the stars and the planets and the whole universe. 
and God wanted everyone to know that they were invited to his party. The whole universe? The whole universe. That is awesome! Next, you're going to tell me that aliens turned up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no aliens, no flying spaceships, but that might have been fun. But you know that star that he sent from just so far away? Well, people came. People followed the star. We call them the Magi. They were very clever people, and they were travelers, and they followed the star all the way to the party. And God wanted to invite them because he wanted us to know that it doesn't matter what language you speak or what you look like or where you're from. Everyone is welcome and God doesn't leave anyone out. That is awesome because including everyone is so important. They must have traveled a long way for that party. They did. Some people think it took them years to get there. What? I know, right? But, fortunately, there were some other people got invited who lived a bit closer. I know. They were the shepherds. Here we go. Now, the shepherds were out on a hillside near Bethlehem. Some of them were very young. Some of them were very old. They were all very poor. And you know what? They probably smelt a bit of sheep poop. Pee! Uh, I know! But God wanted to invite them because he wanted to make sure that it didn't matter whether you were young or old or smelling of sheep poop or whether you were rich or poor, you were invited to his party because God doesn't leave anyone out. Shepherds and travelers and Mary and Joseph and even stars? Even stars. Anyone else, Mike? Well, now you mention it, someone had to go and invite those shepherds. Hmm. And God sent angels. Wow. I know. They appeared in the sky over those hills at Bethlehem, singing and glowing and singing all about this baby born in Bethlehem. It was so exciting. Probably scared the sheep a bit as well. But God invited the angels because he wanted everyone in heaven as well as on earth to come to this party. Because God doesn't leave anyone out. I mean, even angels were there? That is awesome! I bet you that's everyone now, right? Not quite, because you know who else was in that stable? Mm. Well, no, nope. I don't know. Perhaps those magi came on a camel. Did you know that camels don't have to drink water for like a month or something like that if they drink a lot to start? I, don't, I just learned it in class. I, don't. I didn't know that. Yeah, but that was probably really helpful when they were traveling so far, right? Yeah. Then there was Mary and Joseph's donkey. Hey. And the yeah. shepherd's sheep. And, ah. the <laughs> and the person who owned the stable probably had an ox or two in there as well. So it was full of uh, animals. What sound does an ox make? Like a cow. Mer That's the one. You're good at the noises, Nick. Thank you. Yeah. So God made all the animals, and he loves animals, and so he invited them to his birthday as well, because God doesn't leave anyone out, not even the animals. That is awesome! It must have been such a very special night in that stable, right? Well, it was, Nick, but God hadn't finished yet. You mean there's more? Yeah, take a look at this. It's a mirror. It is. Uh, are you doing your hair, Nick? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's a mirror because you're invited. And in. oh, look, if I look at that, I'm invited too. Mm -hmm. You see, God knew not everyone was going to fit in a stable in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. So we have Christmas every year to make sure that everybody gets to celebrate Jesus' birthday. That is the most special invitation I've ever had. And the best looking one. <laughs> what should we do now? Well, Nick, you know, I think we should say a prayer to thank God for inviting us to his birthday. That would be so nice. Let's pray. 
Dear God, thank you for inviting everyone to your birthday. Thank you for the love and care of Joseph and Mary. Thank you for the excitement of those shepherds. And thank you for all those people who came from so far away. Thank you for the animals and for the stars. Help us include everyone in your celebration this year and every year. Amen. Amen. Like, can, can we, we sing, sing together, together again? That sounds like a really good idea, Nick. And after that, our friends Angela, Marlene and Therese can lead us in our prayers when we pray for people all around the world to celebrate Jesus' birthday. That sounds awesome! On this holy night, let us pray for our world, that in places of darkness, there might be light. In places of sadness, there may be comfort. In places of conflict, there may be peace. God of love, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those affected by the coronavirus and those who are working hard to look after the sick and to find treatments or cures or vaccines. And we pray for all those who are sick. God of love, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who feel like they have nowhere to belong, for those who are lonely or bereaved, for prisoners, for those who are a long way from home. May we all know that we belong with you and that you never leave us. God of love, we pray for those who cannot be with their family or friends this Christmas. Please keep them safe and watch over them. God of love, 
Hear our prayer. We pray for the God's beautiful creation, for those who seek to save species from extinction, those who seek to clean our oceans and protect our water, those who develop new technology to safeguard our planet, and for us all that we may honor you in our care for your world. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for those who struggle to provide for their families this Christmas, for those who have lost their jobs, for those struggling to make ends meet, for those who feel crushed by debt. Help us to share from our abundance, to live generously and to be thankful for all we have. God of love. Hear our prayer. We pray for the church throughout the world, celebrating Christmas this night. May we be filled with the light and love of Jesus and show that light and love to the world around us. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves, our friends, and our families that this Christmas and throughout the year, we might celebrate the love we share, the gifts we give each other, and the hopes we cherish for the future. God of love, hear our prayer. We remember the song of the angels and ask for peace in our world, for the end of the war, for the healing of divisions, for care and trust between all people. God of love. Hear our prayer. And we join all our prayers together, saying the words that Jesus taught us. Our, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. That was a great song, all about our special invitation to Christmas. You know, Nick, I am so glad that you got to come to church this year and share Christmas with us. Me too, Mike. You know, we really miss having everyone together in this building. One day we'll see them all again. But right now, would you help me pray for God's blessing upon everyone this Christmas? That would be awesome. Let's pray. May the joy of the angels and the excitement of the shepherds and the eagerness of the magi and the wonder of the stars and the care of Joseph and the love of Mary and the peace of the baby Jesus be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this Christmas time and always. Amen. Amen. Good night, everybody, and Merry Christmas. Good night, Merry Christmas. Yay!